G'day guys, Linderman here in DCS World uh, Beta Patch 128, and this module is the Belsum Tech uh, UH1 Huey. Uh, this is actually a little bit new for the first time. I'm going to try to learn um, sling loading. Hmm. Uh, I'm in a civilian Huey, uh, although some military application can be uh, put to use here, not just delivering supplies but also delivering artillery to the battlefield. And uh, I actually had to look up at the beginning here uh, how to start up the Huey again because it's been a while and I kind of forgot. In fact, I'm a little bit rusty as you'll see in the Huey all around, just uh, getting used to uh, uh, hovering, taxiing, stuff like that. So I've taken off. This is Batumi. You can see with the external view on the top right there that this is the civilian version with no external stores attached, so it's uh, completely slick. Uh, Huey, and off in the distance ahead is a cargo, and in the editor I've set the cargo to be, well, cargo, and you can select it with the radio menu, and when you do that, it uh, emits smoke, and when you get nice and close to it, the smoke disappears. Um, so this is a little bit um, tricky to get used to, um, and this is my first attempt, so it will take quite a while. Uh, now the, the artillery pieces that you can deliver to the field I think will be pretty cool. You can't do it just yet, but the idea is that you could maybe uh, pick up a howitzer, I'm not sure if they can do that, or maybe something smaller, and uh, uh, bring it into the battlefield, and then the combined arms controller can use that to uh, sway the battle. So you can deploy troops, but you then you can also deploy uh, artillery and have the combined arms um, player yeah, controlling the units on the ground to take objectives and you can have a fleet of Hueys uh, delivering supplies and uh, maybe resupplying troops, something like that. You can certainly put this into the uh, scenarios of missions fairly easily. So I'm just getting into a hover here and um, because this is my first time, I actually, for the first few minutes, did not know how to control the sling loading. So I'm getting pretty good at hovering before I hit escape and go into the controls and figure out um, why things aren't working. Um, I do have a switch on my HOTAS, which is hook and unhook, and another one for uh, auto unhook. I've got a button as well, which brings up the camera, apparently, that looks down a virtual view that you otherwise wouldn't have that um, accounts for the fact that you do not have a load master looking out the window giving you some guidance about whether to go forward and backwards. Um, you've also got to use a lot of your peripheral vision to sort of um, stay aware of your motion left, right and centre. Obviously you don't have a HUD and you can see in the top left that I'm getting indications whether I'm above the cargo, below the cargo uh, my understanding, and it might not be correct, is that you have to hover for a few seconds above the cargo and then hit the switch to hook the cargo and the, the sling load will basically magically attach itself. Now this is the harder way of doing it, not only just because I don't have the camera enabled to actually see where the freaking thing is, and it might not be... Um, uh, you might have not have such an appreciation for that because the external view is in the top right. When I was recording this, I didn't have that. That's an external view that's just being recorded with a, um, a replay of the mission. So once it goes out of that little uh, foot window, I really can't see it very well at all, apart from the indication that I'm getting up that I'm in the right place. Um, so uh, yeah, it takes a few goes, and I have to jump into the control panel to um, double check my controls, which is fairly recent that you can actually do that. You can hit escape. Um, I also cheat a tiny bit, considering I don't have the camera, to, s to check where it is. And um, I'm not frustrated or anything like that, but I start getting a little bit heavy-handed with the controls. You can see I start doing some swoopy turns and hard stops and um, things like that. I don't think I was going to crash, but um, people might start getting a little bit concerned if they start seeing a Huey pulling some of these rapid maneuvers to get into position. So there is the cargo. 
getting a good look at it nice and low. I do not know the altitude that you should be at. Um, I, I think I read 30 feet is a good altitude. Um, but I'm really just wanting to keep it in sight um, for as long as possible before it goes under me. You can see that I'm pretty much where I need to be, but I'm going backwards and beyond the zone. So close, uh, but did not hook. So I think I'll give it another go over the zone. Swinging back and forth, uh, not doing a very good job of controlling the oscillations. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a matter of trimming where a good hover can be sustained. Uh, and then just using the, the cyclic to, to deviate from that to stay where you want to go. But it, of course you adjust the collective and when you do that everything else gets thrown out. So um, it's not as easy as it seems. Uh, almost want to... Um, reach out and just grab it you know and you can uh, apparently I believe not that I've done it uh, you can land the helicopter and just hook up uh, the load you don't have to uh, hover above it but um, I prefer to do it this way there's another external view just checking where it is I'll do another 180 and come in again in the ground effect. Alright, so there's the, um, there's the cargo. It would be pretty cool in multiplayer if you could hook up, you know, four helicopters to deliver in supplies or something like that, a proper convoy. Now this is going to be the world's shortest trip as well. I, I did plan on going to Carboletti, but I cut it short and just went to the port, delivered it there, so looks like we're over it I just hitting the switch to uh, collect the supplies cargo is hooked so we have it uh, not that I realize the weight of the unit not the best job and I kind of drag it across the ground you can see I'm not getting any altitude at all so I really start gunning the, uh, the collective uh, and I probably damaged it a little bit there but that's a learning experience. Um, you need to go straight up. You need to really uh, get the line to be uh, under load and then go straight up. Lift that thing off the ground as opposed to trying to get some um, horizontal speed first. So pretty difficult to do. This isn't a huge load. I think it's on the lower end just for beginners. Uh, but you can see the oscillations do occur. And you have to counteract that. So the flight dynamics and the... Um, professional flight model on this Huey is completely different now so it is true physics I suppose you could describe it it's uh, it's pretty amazing the um, the way the flight model just reacts to the fact that you now have this pendulum effect of a sling load and you can see it there in the top right view um, just ahead we're basically just going to go to the port I was going to um, do quite a long flight but um, not much would be gained by just uh, heading off all that way. So we're just over Batumi and we'll deliver supplies that otherwise would have been done far more efficiently by a truck. But we'll just pretend that that's not true. So uh, just actually increasing altitude slightly. I was thinking I'd go up to about 1500 feet which is like a good minimum for VFR flight. So increasing altitude about 500 feet um, before I see the port and I think, oh, I don't, why don't I just take the supplies there? That that's, um, sounds like a good idea. So I kind of kill the climb and slowly head off uh, to the port instead. Um, I believe for sling loading you need to keep your speed, to, I don't know, about 80 to 100 knots, something like that. So um, you're not going to break any land uh, or any air speed records. Um, and yeah, don't know what would happen if you fly too quickly. But the pendulum effect would probably become um, quite uncontrollable. I'm also quite interested if you can actually sling load supplies off the deck of a helicopter, uh, a carrier, uh, or a ship um, of some sort, because that would be pretty awesome. Or for that matter, sling loading things onto a ship if helicopters actually do that but if you think about civilian um, missions and tasks 
um, that that users can create. Um, it's it's pretty interesting, you know, especially if it's uh, scripted to be automatically generating tasks for civilian flights. You know, you've, you've got to go and deliver some supplies. You've got to put a crane on top of a building. I don't know, something like that. Um, Huey's probably not the, the biggest lifter, but. Um, yeah, there's lots of interesting things that you could do, sling loading or just uh, regular flights. So yeah, there's lots of options available for this helicopter because it is pretty widely used as well as the military applications where I mentioned, um, yeah, sort of delivering artillery pieces or ferrying troops. Um, ass and trash, I think they called it back in Vietnam. Missions where you're just basically taxiing or delivering stuff not doing um, uh, the battlefield uh, attack. Okay, so coming in, I thought those were containers, those uh, long buildings just off to the right. Uh, they're actually buildings, small buildings, so that's my kind of chosen point of delivering the supplies, just doing a turn to kind of Ricky the, um, uh, the LZ, or the drop-off point. You can see that the um, fantastic also vibrations in the cockpit with the dashboard start coming into effect as we uh, start uh, losing the translational lift and really having to rev up the engine to take on the weight of the helicopter and I see some trees so there's some trees there I thought maybe I was putting the, the uh, cargo through it but in retrospect perhaps I cleared that nicely you can see the pendulum there of the suppliers as they start losing speed, they swing forward and the helicopter is buffeted around and pulled in different directions and just trying to cope with that. Okay, so I've pretty much, yeah, the speed is reading zero, the altitude is uh, holding steady, very slowly descending. This is probably the most dangerous point of the flight. Um, if you get into a vortex ring state, you are probably going to crash. So um, that dial on the right hand side, the middle, the vertical speed is by far the most important thing. Um, just hit, hit a switch there to flick on uh, the automatic release or unhook. And you can see it just coming down and touch down and the helicopter just naturally flies away. Now I'll just use the external view because I didn't know if it was actually uh, released. It is and you can certainly feel it now the helicopter is back to normal. So. Um, can do a, a little bit of a hot rod flight on the way back. Some nice water down there if you've got the effects on high. Um, I've certainly put work in, I think, over recent years with patches, although I could be wrong. But I think things have been getting a little bit nicer in DCS world um, with the effects and the lighting. Um, it is still the old DirectX 9 engine though. You can just see the external view there, the very nice looking harbour, and um, never really got uh, too close to this sort of thing with the um, A-10 or Flaming Cliffs or anything like that, so uh, helicopters, um, yeah, they need a bit of fidelity close to the ground. Um, so I'm checking daily on the forums in DCS to see the uh, work progress pictures that they are putting up for the new graphics engine. Looks like um, the Nevada terrain will be coming out, but also um, maybe some other maps we were showing there, or maybe it was just the Nevada terrain, but I'm hoping they'll have some other maps fairly quickly behind the, uh, the training area that they've put. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's uh, basically DCS in a DirectX 11 engine. Um, yeah, so that will be pretty cool, especially for the lighting effects. Maybe the frame rate, although frame rates very rarely go up. Um, the only way that happens is when you go out and spend money. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too sure if we'll get uh, extremely fast frame rates, but we'll see. So I'm just doing a bit of a hot rod flight here, low and uh, fairly fast, not too fast. Back to base, and that'll complete the uh, task. We'll just land back to where we were. Now this was left alone in terms of weather and time, so I don't normally do that. I normally fly either the end of the day or the beginning of the day and with dynamic weather. Um, but 
I just didn't didn't really bother with this mission. So there is no wind, which is not that realistic, and it's also a fairly uh, boring time of day for the lighting. Okay, so we're just going to do a left-hand turn. It will be Patuma there. I did talk to the air traffic control to, to ask if I could do a hover check. I haven't really used it since then. Okay, so now things get a little bit interesting. I'm trying to bleed off the speed, it always does. You kind of fight the effects. You can see the uh, vertical speed is ballooning up, so killing the collective and compensating, trying to keep the uh, vertical speed going down. It doesn't really want to as you bleed off the speed, probably because I'm doing some pretty heavy handed. Uh, additions, you can see some waggling going on there as I'm uh, working the uh, anti-torque very slightly, keeping it at about 500 feet per minute. But it's yeah, it's going up and down all over the place. Um, we are kind of lost most of our speed, so we're on the uh, verge there of the translational lift. Okay, you're starting to lose speed, so increasing the collective. Cruising on down, and we'll get into that ground effect cushion and use that to hover taxi back to our parking space. So, you can just see in the top right view there, there's the ground effect. Nice, nicely cushion us, and we can uh, toddle on back to our parking space with all the other Hueys for our VIP civilian helicopter to, uh, to shut down. So, I'd really like to see um, some more missions and tasks for the Huey that maybe are um, not military orientated with sling loading. I think the thing I'd want most would be sling loading off ships. So that's probably going to be the next thing I check out if you can do it. Um, if you are using a, a flight model, and like an advanced flight model or a professional flight model helicopter um, on a ship, and it's probably the same for any planes if, if they can land on a ship as well, the friction doesn't really work and they fall off. So if the ship is moving, it's bad news. Um, I don't know if I would want to sling load off a moving ship anyway. But um, it's something to be aware of, and I really hope they fix that. I did check that in uh, 128 beta, and it's not fixed. So if you've got a uh, MIH or a Huey or, or whatever it is uh, on the back of a ship, it's kind of it just falls off sooner or later. So here's the taxi lines, and I'm just kind of cutting the corner a little bit, uh, and we will wrap around and deliver this Huey back to uh, the Red Octagon parking space at Patumi Airfield. Here's a little bit of a, uh, what is that, a 180? 270 I suppose. Just trying to get it on the line, a little bit to the left. So I'll just push it to the right and uh, hopefully not crunk it. Don't crump against the uh, cement, and there we are. So that is my first uh, attempt at sling loading some supplies.